This is a video I am so excited about. I did a version of this like four months ago, I'll link it below, where I tried a bunch of products that are just kind of cult favorites and they have been for a very long time and kind of sharing, all right, now that you know many years have passed since these were super popular, how are they now? Like, are they, do they kind of stand up to things that have come out since then? Well, today I'm doing a very, very similar video with different products. These are, I would say 50% like cult favorite makeup items that have been popular for a very long time. And I would say the other half of them are ones that are best seller products that have been for at least a couple of years. So it's kind of a mix, but all of these have in common the fact that they've sold really well. A lot of people have talked about them, etc. Honestly, when I was kind of planning for this video and getting pumped up, I was like, let me look online at like different magazines like Allure, Cosmopolitan, etc., and see what are they saying are like cult favorite products. And some of them absolutely made sense. And some of them I was like, what? Like, I don't know. So there were just some weird options on there. And so I was like, instead of going that route and following what they were saying, I just kind of subjectively picked what I thought would fit into this video. So that's what we're gonna do. It'll be a full face. We definitely have a solid mix of like some expensive stuff, but a lot of drugstore as well, because there are some big bestseller type drugstore products that are awesome. So. Let's dive in. I don't even think I had to buy anything new for this video. These were all just things I had in my collection. And some of them I have not talked about or used in a very long time. So I am excited. All right, so the first thing we're gonna put on is this Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Now, it typically doesn't look like this. I'll pop a picture of what it normally looks like in a jar. This stuff is definitely something that has a cult following. A lot of people love it. And there's good reason it is so moisturizing and it feels so good on the skin. And I think the reason people feel that this is worth the price tag is that it works really well under makeup too. It really is just a moisturizer, but it can be used as a primer. So you don't feel like you have to go in after this with something else, unless you're like looking for like pore filling, things like that. It says it primes, moisturizes and smooths. I would agree with that. I feel like smooth is an interesting claim because this is not something that's gonna be like pore filling. Although as I'm saying it, it does make your skin feel really soft. So I just really, really like it. This does have a smell to it. It doesn't bother me so much, but there is something in there that, that you can smell. So if you're someone that, that might bother you, I would maybe stay away. But I like, okay, I wish they had it in a squeezy tube for like the larger ones. This I must have bought a while ago. I mean, I know I bought a while ago, but I'm trying to remember like, was this considered a travel size? If I can find this one, if you just wanna try it and not commit to like the full on jar, I'll see if I can find this size. This is the half a fluid ounce, 15 mil size. So that is one, ding, 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 yes. I think is worth all of the hype. It's worth the bestseller type status. And I feel like my skin looks really nice and moisturized. Speaking of moisturizing, I had way too much coffee this morning, so I'm like, okay, it's time for water. And by way too much, I mean like two full cups, but I've been pretty much sticking around one cup. And so like two full cups is like too much. <laughs> All right, this next one is the only one I'm repeating from the other one I did four months ago, because quite honestly, it's so beautiful that I wanted to use it on camera again. It's the Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is one that has had a cult following for years and it still does, it's still talked about. Estee Lauder does a lot of different types of foundations that are more hydrating, et cetera, but even still, this is one that, even though it's, I don't know that I would call this mattifying, but it just looks nice on the skin, like it just does. I just need to get a pump for it. Especially when you're putting it on top of something like a moisturizing base, like that Bobbi Brown stuff, it looks gorgeous. And it covers so well right off the bat. Like I would call this with one layer medium coverage, but you can get full coverage with this for sure. And if you're using a brush, you're really gonna get high coverage. I just love the way my skin looks with this stuff. It is long wearing, it stays in place. Like I said, if you have drier skin like me, if you use a moisturizing base underneath, it looks a lot better. I think if you're going into this and just putting it straight on, and you have dry patches. I don't know, I think it would still look good, but it definitely needs something underneath it, I think. Just kind of depending on your skin type. It's like getting into a warm bath when you use a foundation you just love. You know what I mean? Like, you're just like, yeah, I'm in good hands here, man. <laughs> I don't even feel like I need a second layer. I really don't. I love the way my skin looks, just, 10 out of 10, still absolutely awesome. If you are near my shade, I'm wearing one in two, 
which is a crew. Now we've talked about a lot of expensive things. We've got a few products next that are drugstore. First off, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This one I recently bought, I wanna say like a year or two ago, and I have used half of it. I really do like it. I really do. This is the shade Fair, and it's just got the little applicator that some people love, some people hate. I kind of like it. <laughs> it's easy to apply. I just find that it's super brightening. Mm. Again, I always feel like I'm in good hands with this stuff, but boy, does it get disgusting and messy at the top, no matter what you do. Like, no matter what you do, unless you clean that every single time, and even still, the sponge is gonna touch it, so it's, it's always just gonna be dirty. You just have to be okay with that, which I'm only 50% okay with. This is one I feel like you can use a brush or a sponge with. It is drier than I remembered it being back in the day. Like, I feel like this stuff was a little bit creamier back when it was like first launched. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just gonna do this with, this with the sponge. But I even with the brush, I just feel like it, it sets down pretty quickly. So like this is not one I feel like you can put on and like leave it for a while to get tacky. It's kind of already like ready to be blended in right away. But it blends in really fast. Look how bright my under eyes look. <laughs> like holy cannoli. That's awesome. So ease of use. Packaging is mediocre because the messiness slash if you don't like the sponge. But... So easy to use. I actually do like though, now that I'm thinking about it, that you can see how much you have left. Cause think about it, like with most concealers, you're dipping the doe foot in and you're just like, I think I still have some left, like a sum still coming out, but you really never know how full or empty it really is. But with this one, you can like actually tell. And because this one's not super like emollient or anything, I don't, it still is gonna sink into some fine lines, but I don't feel like it has to be set with powder. Like it kind of sets itself. And again, I don't think it used to be that way, but regardless, I don't know if the formula has changed or not, but that's just the way this one is. So I don't mind it though. I think it looks really, really nice. So the next one, I lost this little cover, but it's the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil. This is not like a cult favorite from 10 years ago, but this is a product that has definitely had best-selling hyped up status for a while. This sucker is like $2, I think. It's really good. So I have the shade neutral brown. It's like creamy, so it's really quick to apply. And I just like it. I don't know if I like it so much because I feel like it's a decent shade match for me too, but I just find it to be a really easy to use brow pencil. It's creamy, so you can really like kind of pull the color through and spread it out easily. I feel like lately, like literally when I say lately, I mean like the past week or two, I don't know what I'm doing differently, but I feel like every brow product I've been using is pulling a little bit red on me. Even like my wow brow that I've been using forever, I bought a new one of and I, it was fine. Like it's not like it was a different, slightly different shade variation. But then all of a sudden I was trying to think, I'm like, was it the SPF I was using that was like making it like look a different color when some, like was it reacting to something on my skin? I don't know. I feel like this isn't pulling as warm, so maybe maybe it is just this right now? I don't know. Let me know if you've had that experience with the wow brow because y'all know I love that stuff. I'm like, well, maybe this one is just weird. I'm trying to think, the only thing I've been using when I notice it is the Milani SPF BFF, which I love. It's a really good sunscreen, but I'm wondering if the wow brow is reacting to that when I would put it on and it's like making it pull orange. All right, so, so far, everything is awesome. I mean, spoiler alert, pretty much everything I'm using is absolutely awesome. There's a reason I have it in my collection slash still have it in my collection. But I do have a few thoughts about some of these that like they might not be right for all people slash they might not be my favorite. So the next thing we're going to do is eyes, I think. We're going to do the MAC Paint Pot and Painterly, baby. Wow, this stuff has been around the block. This is a newer-ish one. I know I've like used one up. One of them, like when I'd repurchase it, like got old. And I've had the shade Soft Ochre too, but Painterly, I think I've decided is best for my skin tone to kind of blend right in as like an eye primer, cream shadow type product. But it just kind of evens things out. It like weirdly gives like coverage and yet it holds on to shadow beautifully. And I was thinking just now, <laughs> I was gonna say recently, but like I was just now thinking, you know that like look that a lot of people do where it's like, it's simple. It's literally no eyeshadow, but like liner and mascara and their face is done, but just no eyeshadow. And it always looks so modern and fresh. Well, every time I do that, where I have no eyeshadow and I put on liner and mascara, it just doesn't quite look 
the way I want it to. And I'm like, well, what, what, what is it? I think it's that I need to have some kind of base that doesn't look like eyeshadow, but that just evens it all out. Because I think what I wasn't liking was that I could still see like veining there. And so I just felt like my face looked incomplete. But I think something like this would be the answer where I can just put it all over, then do my liner and mascara and feel like I've got that modern look. Modern. <laughs> I feel like such an old lady calling something modern. I don't know why. <laughs> I love it. All right. Next thing, this is so much fun. It's like a trip down memory lane slash just gushing about awesome products. The Maybelline Fit Me Powder. Man, oh man. I was very late to the game on this one. I only tried this for the first time like a couple years ago and it has been out for a minute. But it's just such a great loose powder because it really makes your skin look blurred. It makes your makeup last longer, but if you get a color that kind of works for your skin tone, it also provides a little bit of coverage. So like for me, with most foundations, I don't have this problem as much with this because it is higher coverage, but with most foundations, my nose can just get a little weird. And so this kind of like any makeup that may be missing, this covers it. So just gonna kind of focus it in those areas. I want a little more coverage, a little more protection. I feel like this helps too with like mask wearing. Like I said, I could use this on my under eye. It's not my favorite under eye powder, but I also don't feel like I really need an under eye powder today with that Maybelline concealer. Why did I wear black pants? Honestly, y'all, I've been living in joggers. <laughs> I'll link my favorite pair down below. I don't even wanna say how many of this exact pair I bought, but I've been living in them, okay? They're, they're more comfortable than leggings because they're fitted somewhat and they're kind of gathered, but they are the most comfortable material. They don't squeeze my midsection. Like, I'm just saying they were a little bit pricey, but they're the best ones I've ever, 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 ever tried. Okay, and if you saw my packing video, I mentioned the joggers that I like travel in. That's what I'm talking about. So I'll link those. I think I forgot to link it in that. I might have eventually added it, but I just forgot. All right, so this is one that's not like cult favorite from 10 years ago, but it is definitely a bestseller, super hyped up. The e.l.f. Bite Size eyeshadows. I haven't talked about these in a little while, but for a while I talked them to death. I think these are awesome. They're like four bucks. These are the three I currently own. I own Pumpkin Pie, which what a great time for this little quad. My favorite, which is Rose Water. And then I also have Cream and Sugar, which I just love the name of. It makes me feel so cozy. These are all beautiful. I mean, they're so inexpensive. You could get a couple and mix and match if you wanted. I'm gonna do rose water because I haven't used this in a while and it's my favorite. I always go in with the kind of pinkish shade first. I wanna try more of the Essence little six pans. I have one that's the Coral Me Maybe and they're super inexpensive and they're so good. I think those are around like five or six bucks. They are so good as well. They remind me of these in that way, but there are so many different ones. So I wanna get another one or two of those and try them out and let you guys know how I feel because I really was impressed with the Coral Me Maybe one and it was totally a dupe for an M Cosmetics one that I loved. So let's go in to this kind of matte shade here just to kind of blend it together. I just feel like this palette makes it so easy to do kind of a mauve look but it's not quite as intimidating. Y'all know me, I am a comfort zone girl. I just stick with what I know and what I like on my eyes for the most part. But this is an easy way to do a more purpley look. There's no guesswork, you know what I mean? It's pretty easy. So I'm gonna grab this one here now and just tap it on kind of the center, but just kind of flaring it out a bit. Like a nice sloppy all American halo eye. <laughs> There's nothing American about it. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I told Tyler, I'm going through a phase where I keep calling things all American and I never mean it as like truly all American. It's just to me, it's funny to say. I don't know why. I don't know why that's funny. It's it's really not. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Sometimes I'll take that darker color and do like the outer corner, but y'all, these palettes are so easy to use. They're cute, they're high quality, and there's a lot of different colorways. So for liner, we're gonna use the Urban Decay Glide On Eye Pencil. I have it in Perversion. I've used almost all of it. I've had this one for a while and I put it away for quite some time because I just found other ones that were awesome that I was using too. But these are super black, super creamy, or I mean, they're super whatever color you want. I mean, that is like one of the blackest liners I own. I wanna try flicking this out like with a little brush. So I'm gonna apply a little more in the outer corner here. That totally worked because it's so creamy, you've got time to kind of work with it. It's just so easy to work with you guys. This is one that 
I would consider buying again once I run out. There are so many very similar products though. I, there are so many liners I love that are super creamy, but I mean, there is something to be said. This one has withstood the test of time and it has always been exactly this good. So for mascara, this is an oldie but a goodie, the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara. This is one I remember, and I know I've told this story before, but I remember before I had a YouTube channel, saving up to buy this mascara because it was so popular and I just wanted to know what all the hype was about. And I remember trying it and like liking it, but being like, oh, but it's not like magic. Do you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that was one of my first experiences with not being let down. Cause like I said, I think it's a good mascara, but it was one of my first experiences buying a high-end product ever. And then kind of realizing like, oh, this is not like leaps and bounds better than a lot of the drugstore mascaras I already use. And I kind of feel like that maybe is part of why, I mean, I know part of why I want to start my YouTube channel is because I love drugstore makeup and I wanted to talk about that because after trying little bits of high end and realizing like sometimes these are better, but they're not always better. That kind of made me want to learn more about that, play with makeup more and like share about what I find. Like there are really amazing products at the drugstore. Y'all know. There are really amazing high-end products too, obviously, but you don't always have to spend the money, you know? I feel like it is nice. It curls, it separates, it volumizes. Like I think it looks pretty. It's a good mascara. Is it something that I would repurchase over and over again as like my favorite mascara? No. And really honestly, it's because the wand is kind of like twisted. That's the way it's made. And I don't love that because that doesn't hug the curve of my eyes. I think the way it's supposed to because everyone has a different eye shape and eye width. And I mean, there's so many variables. That's one big reason for me I don't buy this one all the time. I like it, but it's just not the perfect mascara for me. This is definitely one of those mascaras that from time to time I just repurchase for old time's sake. And so a couple months ago, that, that's exactly what I did. I repurchased for old time's sake. And I do that every so often because I know it's a good mascara and it just, every time I open it, it makes me think of like my pre-YouTube days when I just loved makeup and I loved watching YouTube. And guess what? I still love makeup and I still love watching YouTube. <laughs> Not much has changed. Are you guys ready for an ultimate throwback? This is the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in Medium. Do you remember this stuff? I remembered pining after this stuff for so long. I'm trying to think of what brush I want to use for this, but it's just, it was one of those powders that everyone loved because it was kind of like a bronzer, but it was more gray toned. And so it really was meant to be more of like a sculpting product. But what I fell in love with this, for, you know what I mean, is the fact that it didn't pull so orange on my skin. So I could still wear it in bronzery spots. It just always looked nice, holy moly. Why don't I use this all the time? That was back when everyone was arguing over like, oh my gosh, you're using a sculpting powder for in the bronzer spots. How dare you? Don't you know what a contour is? And like, everyone's arguing about that kind of stuff. Nowadays, I feel like everyone's like, use it how you want, who cares? Like. If you wanna use a more contoury product and accidentally or on purpose call it a bronzer, like I understand the difference, but it's like there are bigger problems. <laughs> there are bigger problems in the world. I just feel like this can look so beautiful. So this is one I stand by is just gorgeous, especially if you are someone that you do feel like a lot of like bronzer and contour products just pull too orange on you. You may look into this line because I mean, like I said, it's not technically a bronzer. It's supposed to be more of a contour, but if you place it like a bronzer, it totally works and it doesn't look orange. I just feel like that looks so almost natural. Okay, I have got to like put that in my vanity daily rotation because that stuff is literally perfect. I love the way it looks, you guys. All right, let's do it, MAC. Warm Soul. This is different than the original. And to be honest with you, I never tried the original one. So I'm just basing it on the newer version of this, but I figure, well, let's talk about it anyway. A lot, I just remember every makeup collection video I would watch, everyone had so many MAC products. Like that was definitely a thing. And they would have like 15 MAC blushes and they'd have their mineralized ones. They'd have their like regular ones. They'd have their, uh, mineralized skin finish ones. I just love it all. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's definitely a, a nice like baked glowy type blush. It's like you can put on a little bit and it's not super obvious, but you can definitely pack it on. I need to refilm a video. I filmed one yesterday and my makeup by the time I filmed it looked so crazy 
that I literally was looking back at the footage and I was like, I don't, I can't do it. Like it just looks crazy. <laughs> and so I may be refilming that after this, mostly because I'm really digging the way my <laughs> makeup looks today. So the highlighter is one that I've loved for years, the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. People still talk about. So this is one that's just, again, withstood the test of time and it is so freaking good. It's so good. I feel like you can't get too crazy with it. Like it always just looks perfect. It's the perfect highlighter for me. Oh my gosh. And it's never too terribly frosty. Like it gives you a glow for sure, but it never looks too frosty or like, I don't know, man. I just feel like it's hard to screw this one up. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna line my lips. This is not a cult favorite, but this is just the one I'm gonna use. It's the Laura Mercier Hazelnut Tea Lip Liner. And then we're gonna get into the lipstick. I hope y'all are having fun with this one. I'm having a ball filming it. <laughs> All right, lip liner is on. Let's do this one. This is one of the original Milani lipsticks in the original like bullet packaging. This is in the shade Teddy Bear. Now this is actually a more recent purchase for me because so many of you guys recommended it. The only thing I have to say is the smell of this, in my opinion, is awful and it has never changed. It smells like cheap watermelon. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I hate it, but it's a really great formula. Milani, please release an unscented version of all of this. But the shade Teddy Bear is such a like perfect, nude, amazing fall and winter shade. So if you can handle the smell, I say go for it. I'm 50-50 on if I can actually handle this smell. Cause I feel like it lingers, you know? Can't we just get a good old all American vanilla smell? That's not American. <laughs> I love the way that looks though, right? Like it's comfy. It feels like a weirdly moisturizing. Actually, now that I'm saying weirdly, it's their color statement lipstick. For some reason I was thinking that it was one of their matte ones, but it's not. So I guess that's not weird that it feels moisturizing. It just does feel moisturizing. This was not meant to be a part of today's outfit. That was just to hold my hair back if you were curious. So that is everything. If you see me in person, I have got like, I feel like it's washing out the purple just a bit being in the like natural light. But like that with this is like totally clashing, but I'm, I don't, I think it still looks good, man. So, I mean, I just feel like all in all, there are so many amazing products that I'm so thankful that brands hold on to. We're definitely living in an age where we're all looking for the next best thing. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I love looking at new releases and buying new makeup and trying new stuff, but there is something to be said for products that have just kind of stuck around and brands continue to sell that are just really good. And so then they have this chance to even become cult favorites because they're actually around long enough to like see that status. You know what I mean? Let me know what your favorite item of all of these ones I mentioned today is. Also let me know what are some of your favorite items that you've been using for five plus years maybe even 10 plus years, ones that you always go back to, even though you're maybe trying other things, you always end up repurchasing or grabbing for the same product over and over again. Let me know what that is because I have some ideas for a future video. That's all, I have some ideas that just came to me. So <laughs> I better write it down before I forget it. Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching. Again, if you wanna watch my other cult favorites makeup video, I will link it down below and up in the eye. You can watch that right now. And I hope you'll subscribe, stick around, watch some other videos of mine, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.